Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today's a special edition because September 3rd is Yargle Day and this week's Midweek Magic has a special Yargle Brawl event introducing two emblems. One of them says frogs get a two mana discount and the other one says whenever a frog we control enters we may sacrifice a creature. If we do draw a card and that frog gains all of the abilities of the sacrificed creature we're not really going to be using this one all that much but getting a two mana discount on all our frogs is perfect. It just so happens that I was already working on a Grolnok Brawl deck. I tried it in the event and it happened to be very powerful and then I've made a few modifications specifically for the event but I'll also include the unmodified version if you want to play this later in the regular Brawl queue. So let's take a very quick look at our deck list. Our commander is Grolnok the Omnivore, normally 4 mana, 2 mana in this event, a 3-3 saying whenever a frog we control attacks mill 3 cards and then whenever a permanent card is put into our graveyard from our library we exile it with a croak counter on it and almost every card in this deck is a permanent, a very few instants and sorceries. And then we can play lands and cast spells from among cards we own in exile with croak counters on them. So whenever a frog attacks, we essentially draw three cards, since those cards will end up in exile where we can play them for as long as we control a Grolnok. So this is a very powerful card, especially in a deck where we can consistently play a frog on turn one, play Grolnok on turn two, immediately attack and start exiling cards from the top of our library. And then taking a look at our deck breakdown here, it's mostly frogs, 24 total, plus 9 shapeshifters with a changeling mechanic, which also count as frogs. So these are all the creatures that get a 2 mana discount, which also includes some artifacts like the automaton, decoy, and the mascot, which we can play for free since they get a 2 mana discount. The halo hopper we can also easily cast since we can just tap one creature for convoke. All these 3 drops essentially cost 1 mana, so even though some of them may not be all that exciting, when you actually get to play them for one mana, they get pretty ridiculous, especially a card like the Lookout, which finds an extra land. We've got Realmwalker to play Frogs of the Top, and then some additional powerful frogs here at four mana as well. Frogmite we can also often play for free. And then taking a quick look at our non-frogs, we've got Splash Portal as one of the few non-permanents, can still flicker a frog and draw a card, can maybe be a way to free Grolnok from an opposing enchantment that's preventing it from working. Got some other mana creatures to just speed up our mana production since we want to quickly be able to play all those cards from exile. So we still have some additional mana acceleration as well as ways to play additional lands. So we've got birds, halfling, elvish mystic, lanor elves, utopia sprawl is perfect here as well. And then willow geist is actually one of the better payoffs because whenever one or more cards leave our graveyard we get to put a plus one plus one counter on willow geist. And as you may remember from the standard build that I featured a few years ago, willow geist is very synergistic with Grolnok because if you exile three cards from your graveyard with Willow Geist in play it will pick up three plus one counters so for each frog that attacks Willow Geist picks up three plus one plus one counters and then when it dies we also gain life equal to its power. Then we've got Thassa's Oracle as well as Jace, since theoretically you could end up milling yourself out and then having additional win conditions is nice. We've got some additional landfall cards to accelerate our mana, Lotus Cobra and Tireless Provisioner to make additional mana. Then the Grizzled Genius is also quite synergistic as we get a 2 mana discount on top of our 2 mana discount on frogs for each card we try to play out of exile, which is often going to be the case. Then Arcane Signet for a bit of extra ramp. Mesmeric Orb can be a great way to turbocharge our graveyard. Whenever we untap a permanent we can mill ourselves for one. So this is great if we can get a lot of extra creatures and lands on the battlefield and then turn all those milled cards into exiled cards with Grolnok in play. So it provides a lot of card advantage and will turbocharge the win with Thassa's Oracle and Jace. And then we've got ways to play additional lands. Azusa, Dried of the Elysian Grove, Sawtooth, and then at 4 mana Oracle of Moldaya, as well as the case of the Locked Hall house which is also great in a deck full of creatures and potentially some enchantments and then some other cards that are very synergistic with Grolnok include the Chalk Outline, saying whenever one or more creature cards leave our graveyard, create a 2-2 white and blue detective creature token and investigate. So whenever one of those creatures gets milled and then exiled, it also triggers the Outline, so this can make lots of 2-2 detective tokens. And then very similar is the Desecrated Tomb, making 1-1 bat tokens with flying whenever a creature card leaves our graveyard. And then the banner can pump all frogs, can tap for mana. We've got Roaming Throne to double the triggers of our frogs, also very good with Grolnok, although sadly doesn't get the 2 mana discount from the emblem since it's not a frog when we cast it initially. 
And then last but not least, Kindred Discovery and Reflections of Lijara, both naming frog to either copy your frogs or draw additional cards when they enter or attack. So these are also a lot of fun. And then a mana base has a couple fetch lands as well to enable our various landfall synergies and to fix our colors. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Just hope to play a frog on turn one, Grolnok on turn two, and that will take care of the rest. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Glarb, Calamity's Augur. And uh, yeah, this hand's reasonable. Can play free decoy plus a poison dart frog. Got some other mana elves. Generally not interested in sacrificing anything. So we'll play Grolnok, attack, and then most likely play a Birds of Paradise as well. Lotus Cobra is going to be great next turn with a fetch lane. So Glarb doesn't really benefit from the frog discount as much. But they are still playing the city, so they must have other frogs in the deck. Like the Fountain Port Charmer. And they cast it with Offspring. Alright, so we start with Lotus Cobra, plus Verdant. And then Splash Lasher can clear a path. Can uh, cast it now. Could also cast it with Offspring, but I don't think that's necessary. Attack with at least these two. And we also found our three tree city. All right, so damage happens. And then can fetch, get a breeding pool. Make some mana. And then I'm gonna wanna deploy as many frogs as possible, I think. Alright, so we're going nice and wide. One of the advantages of playing black is that you could have some sweepers that specifically target a certain creature type, so you could wipe away all frogs, for instance. Our opponent kicking things off with a Valley Might Caller. And now a Coalition Construct, which got a 2 mana discount from Charmer and the Offspring token. And now a duo can flicker a creature. So yeah, this uh, Charmer did a lot of work. Our opponent's got some good blockers. Alright, so what's next? Probably fine to send in most of my creatures just to get the triggers. Although I might want a 3 tree city before all my frogs die. Even though this is a little bit of overkill. Let's me play Azusa. Couple elves. And then we'll save the extra land drops. Can give Steeple Creeper flying. So it doesn't attack into the Might Caller, I guess. Or we could give Death Touch to the frog. And I'm just going for it here. Hope to accumulate enough value to make this worthwhile.
We found our Jace, which could be a win condition. Alright, so lots of cards in exile. Still have some extra land drops remaining, and we can play Befuddler at instant speed. Although I don't think that's gonna necessarily save anyone. So damage happens. And then now we have to take a close look at our mana. Can uh, play Utopia Sprawl for starters. And then play as many fetch lands as possible. Do we see more fetch lands? I guess I was the only one. Alright, and then Hinterland Harbor. Can play Swordtooth to play an additional land. I guess there is still a Scalding Tarn hiding here. So we still have a decent amount of frogs we can deploy. Sentinel can pick up a creature again. Does that benefit me? I guess um, it'll give the scribe uh, an extra trigger and I can pick up the decoy, which we can play for free. And counter goes on. Maybe the Sentinel itself. Could pay two to draw. Don't think that'll be necessary. So replay it. Go to one mana Frogmite. Can play Mentor. Sadly, we lost some of the good flicker targets for the ability. So one mana Frogmite. And then Warden. And maybe the Mesmeric Orb as well. And then we can use Jace as a win condition. Alright, that'll do it. So not a bad turn. Next turn with the city could get even crazier. Opponent pumping their frogs once again. Which are getting pretty large. Alright, so should be able to set up some decent blocks. In fact, our opponent's gonna scoop it up. So yeah, that's how you do it. On to the next one. Okay, it's finally time for the Grolnok mirror match. We're on the draw here, which is a big deal, but we've got a solid hand. Start with Lookouts, get an extra land, and then turn to Grolnok plus maybe a Krokonura. Yeah, our Clifftop Lookout is just a better Lenor Elves. Is your opponent still unable to play Grolnok right now? But they've got a Signet. Alright, so can fetch up an island here. And then Krokonura into Grolnok seems fine. Attack, mill for three. And we found 
the uh, Grizzled Genius, which is quite good at casting spells from exile. Opponent plays their own Grolnok. Although no frog to attack with right away. And we get to untap. Alright, so can play the duo to maybe pump up the lookout. They may have a counter spell up. Right, they're gonna use the Serpent to bounce a Grolnog back, that's fine. Can just replay it for two mana. And attack. The uh, Fountain Port Charmer, one of the few alchemy cards we're playing, can give our creatures a one mana discount in hand, so can play a free Faceless Agent. Although it's tempting to get the Reflections of Lijara in play first. So we can uh, get additional copies. Opponent with an invasion of Ravnica. It's gonna get rid of our duo. Yeah, we can just let damage happen here. Opponent's not playing too many frogs. Alright, so this could be a setup turn for Reflections, although opponent can just bounce it for two mana. So I think we're better off just playing some things for cheap. But yeah, our opponent has already seen enough. Can play the Charmer, play a free Faceless Agent, a one mana Lasher to tap things down and take over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Thalia and the Gidrog monster. And we've got a keepable hand. Turn one, probably go for Sentinel as our biggest frog. And then turn two, I could be convinced to play Clements and then another frog before playing Grolnok. Opponent's got a Pretender. Although this could be a good window to just get our first attack in before the Pretender gets too large. Yeah, let's try that actually. And then next turn we've got some decent options available. It's gonna be a Valley Might Caller. And do we see another frog? We don't. Okay, so in that case, probably just attack with a Sentinel. And we found a Crocanura. So let's play Crocanura first and then Clement. And then I can still play a one mana frog or a Birds of Paradise if we prefer. Maybe that's a little bit better than a 2-1. Although I guess with Clement in play it also taps for mana. But uh, yeah, the plan I think is going to be Kindred Discovery, naming Frog, and then playing the Crier is also going to draw me a card. Opponent with Cloud Key to give creatures another 1 mana discount. And uh, yeah, we've got options here. Don't hate the Kindred Discovery. Maybe use this as a setup turn. Naming Frog. Can 
can play Mentor, which will grow Krokanura, which can maybe still attack. We get to mill three and draw from Discovery. Possible we don't even need Kindred Discovery in this deck since just playing more frogs is pretty much as good as uh, drawing extra cards. So out of these, probably want to play the Flyer. And then can still play Halo Hopper. There might be some infinite loops we can set up with Clements. If we find a frog we can play for free, Halo Hopper is close to that. Put on now playing Thalia and the Gidrock Monster, that's fine. Maybe should have prioritized playing my non-basics first. Bone's got their own Krokanura. So Thalia picked up the ability to grow whenever a frog enters. Okay, so can play basic for turn. And then we still have quite a few options available. Opponent does have a 1-3 reach, but it doesn't eat my Mistwalker, so that can still pretty easily attack. And then I might just want to start going wide to set up for next turn. So play Dryads. All our frogs tap for mana, so even if they're not attacking, they're still useful. And then, let's see here. Maybe start with Faceless Agents. Lookout's great. And then can still play a basic, although I don't have a forests to enchant with Utopia Sprawl. Technically all my lands are forests now with the uh, Dryad, but if it dies my Utopia Sprawl would fall off. So I'm just gonna save it for next turn, I think. And yeah, with Clement we could potentially keep picking up creatures here, but uh, I think we'll be fine without it. Probably want to play the case of the Locked Hothouse, although should have used my actual land since Clement only lets me tap to cast creature spells. So should have uh, taken that into account as well. But we still have plenty of other creatures we can cast. So I guess there's birds that can still cast the Signets. And then... Play a couple more creatures out. Discard the non-basic lands. Lotus Cobras, pretty good too. Although I can maybe play that next turn. Again, could have tapped a frog to cast a steeple creeper in case we draw some uh, non-creature spell we need to cast for one mana. Now a pretender, naming frog. I really hope our opponent doesn't have a board wipe. And then play harvester. And River Lurker I could play next turn as well, although maybe it's fine to just play now, give our frog some additional protection. I 
Alright, and then uh, Lunar Elves. Hoping my opponents cannot deal 25 damage. Seems unlikely, but maybe if they've got some infinite combo lined up. Halo Hopper they got to play for free, thanks to Cloud Key. And now an Anurid. Sanking the Halo Hopper. And a land. Sentinel can pick up a creature. So that's at least two more counters. So yeah, they're getting pretty close to 25. Maybe should have left an extra blocker back. That also triggers Evolve. So that's 22 damage. Sack a land. And they can still play one out. Plus one more from Thalia, and now a Pyre. And an attack. Alright, so opponent got very close to just killing us here. But we should have... 12 damage on the way back, at the very least. And we might even be able to mill ourselves out with Grolnok. And then Jace and Thassa's Oracle could also win the game. Yeah, I guess we can quickly do the math here. How many frogs do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, times 3. So it's not quite enough to mill ourselves out completely. If we had a roaming throne to double the triggers from Grolnok, then we would be able to, and then just win with Jace or Thassa's Oracle, even if we don't have lethal damage. But yeah, as you can see here, usually if you're attacking with this many creatures, you're also attacking for enough damage. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Opponent also playing with Grolnok. Do we keep this? Yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. Can play Cryer turn one. And then Mesmeric Orb gives Frogmite another discount. Azusa for additional land drops. Opponent built their deck correctly with the Automaton. Although they just drew a card with it. Now could play the Leapfrog as well. That way we can attack into a Grolnok on turn 2. And there it is. And a Steeple Creeper for 1 mana. Quite good too. But let's get this party started. Charmer is going to be pretty useful at discounting our creature spells. They're pretty far from casting an Immortal Sun. But they did find some frogs as well. Yeah, free... Decoy, a one mana lookout, those are both quite good. So yeah, we've got a true test here for our deck. The mirror match, we're on the draw, so we're behind. But can our synergies pull us through? So the plan is probably going to be to play the Charmer first. Which allows me to play a 2-mana Azusa. And then we can play more things afterwards. Slogurk 
That one's not a frog. Okay, so Pretender was also a good draw. Play Azusa. Zero mana Frogmite. Although I suppose we could consider attacking first. Send in the Leapfrog. They will probably trade for the Decoy, since now we can actually remove the Decoy with a Masked Vandal. So I think that's the plan. Can play Masked Vandal and the Bellowing Crier. Maybe start here. All right, and the land I'll keep. I don't think we'll need Mesmeric Orb. Alright, so we've got Frog Superiority, and then next turn we can put our Tree Guard Duo to use as well. Bono now casting the Immortal Sun. A free Halo Hopper. But no attacks. Alright, so step one, play the Duo. Unless we also want to play the Mentor here, but I don't think I'm going to be flickering stuff. And I might want to spend my mana elsewhere. So the Pretender can attack as a 6-6. And then we can send in something else here. The Charmer, perhaps. Sadly, wouldn't be able to channel Busseju on the Immortal Sun. And then we can play Utopia Sprawl for starters. Get some of these extra land drop effects in play. So we can quickly deploy all these cards from exile. And we should be able to solve the case as well. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So yeah, even on the draw, our deck managed to pull ahead. Okay, we're on the play, facing the actual factual Yargle, Glutton of Urborg. This hand's a little underwhelming. This is a bit better. Hopefully we get to see Desecrated Tomb in action. So turn one, Realmwalker, plus Mascot. Naming none other than Frog. And then we've got Masked Vandal coming up. Opponent with a Vorpal Sword. Okay. Let's try and Grawl Knock. And immediately mill six. And then next turn I want to play Desecrated Tomb if possible. as we could immediately attack, mill nine cards, and potentially make a whole bunch of bats. Although they might have removal here. No, just a bank buster. Perfect. Also reasonable to play a couple more frogs first. But I just want to see a bank token before our opponent concedes. And yeah, there's the concession already. So yeah, that's a creative tomb, also excellent in this archetype. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play. Time for another Grawl Knock Mirror. And uh, Willow Geist is not a frog, but does work quite well with Grawl Knock. And we have a zero mana creature we can play. So I think that's the plan. Willow Geist into Automaton. And then Grawl Knock can immediately start growing the Geist. Opponent with Alana Elves. Alright, so let's go ahead and play Grolnok. And smash. Maybe could have considered using You Are What You Eat to uh, give the Willow Geist's ability to the Automaton so it could attack as a frog and keep growing. But wow, opponent scoops it up already. Willow Geist picking up three plus one counters is going to get out of hand very quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a reasonable hand. Turn one lookout is a decent start. Can immediately convoke a Halo Hopper as well. So we've got two frogs on turn one. And then we can get our Grolnok in play. Our opponent's got a one mana pretender, so that's pretty good too. Especially if they've got more creatures to follow up with. Alright, just a one creature for now. So don't have a great attack with a lookout this turn, although next turn we should be able to play the duo to pump up one of our creatures at least. And then our one extra mana is going to go to waste here, which is unfortunate. Easy enough to replay Grolnok if it does get removed. Our opponent passes, so it can cast an uncounterable Frog Hemoth. And attack with all three. Nine cards get exiled. Hopefully find some more mana creatures. And we sure did. Won't be able to use Utopia Sprawl effectively this turn, but all our elves will do. And then next turn we can keep going off with Lotus Cobra. Can play the duo for Lookout to attack. And we've got a bunch more 1 mana frogs to deploy. Opponent takes it. And play Lanor Elves. Alright, they can finally play Glarb. But it feels like they're already too far behind, and our opponent scoops it up. Alright. Okay, we're on the play, facing Grolnok, so people are maybe starting to wisen up to the idea that uh, this is the best deck. Let's see, Halo Hopper plays a 1-mana Frogmite. Yeah, this isn't bad. Could have been even more explosive if we had some 2-mana artifacts that we could play for free, because then we would have been able to empty our entire hand. But still looking at turn 2 Grolnok and attack to trigger. Opponent's got the Charmer on one, so that's quite scary. As I'll be able to play things for cheap. But at least we've got a free attack here. So next turn we can play Dryad. Plus Realmwalker, perhaps. Mesmeric Orb is going to start milling. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, facing Thalia and the Gidrog monster. What do we think of our hand? It's a little clunky here with Cavern not making green for Willowgeist and Halfling. This is better. Still probably want to play a frog on turn one. And uh, probably go with uh, Warden here. So we can play Grolnok and fly over. Also reasonable to play a couple more frogs first, but then they might also have removal for Grolnok, so we don't ever get to trigger it. And all right, our opponent scoops it up, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, time for another Grolnok mirror match. This hand is severely lacking in the frog department. Do have some good ramp, and then Willowgeist is powerful. So my sequence would be turn one halfling, turn two Grolnok plus Willowgeist. I think that's maybe still good enough, since we should be able to attack with Grolnok into hopefully not too many creatures from the opponents. Opponent's got the free decoy. That's still okay. So play uncounterable Grolnok. And Willowgeist. And then the Entrancer can also clear a path for us next turn. Can go Provisioner, play a land, play Entrancer. So we can tap down Grolnok. And the Willow Geist is gonna start getting out of hand. Opponent takes seven, and then next turn we're attacking with two frogs. This would grow up to a 10-10. Opponent's got the Mentor on defense, so they can profitably block one of my frogs now. But I don't think we mind. So, yeah, let's just attack with everyone. Opponent's probably going to take out Grolnok, and then we'll just replay it most likely. Could have maybe waited to attack and then see if we can find a fetch land for the Provisioner, but we wouldn't be able to cast the cards from Exile if Grolnok is dead, so we'd have to replay it first. And alright, our opponent scoops it up, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Helga, Skittish Seer. What do we think of our hand? Lots of uh, one-mana frogs here, Clement could be good. Yeah, I'll keep it. And then we'll start with our uh, Bloodline Pretender. I'll just get a Breeding Pool. And name Frog. Turn 2 could already play Grolnok, or we could get Clement in play first, and then play another Frog out. Opponent using Helga. So it doesn't really benefit from the 2-mana discount. And let's go for a Gladewalker, perhaps. And then next turn playing Grolnok will already trigger a bunch of times. Well, 
let's start by attacking, and then we can still play things second main. A zero mana decoy is quite appealing. And then if we do somehow end up decking, Thassa's Oracle can be a win condition for us as well. But our opponent has already seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a decent hand with two free spells. And a Sentinel. Probably better than playing a Birds. Forest is probably good enough. Could pick up a creature again and then replay it for free, but doesn't really accomplish much. So hopefully they don't present a blocker, and we get to play Grolnok and exile nine cards. Perfect. I guess they could have a wash away for Grolnok. Let's find out, they don't. And draw nine cards essentially on turn two. It's pretty powerful. Can still play a free Halo Hopper by tapping Grolnok, and yeah, that's gonna be good enough. Awesome. Okay, we're on the play facing the Gidrog, and our hand is reasonable. Turn one, Krokanura. Turn two, Grolnok, and then turn three can go Banner plus Frogmite at the very least. And get our forest. And we'll see what our opponent's up to here. Did they dedicate their deck to the frog theme? Yeah, turn one Bloodline Pretender is a good one. Although we'll still be able to grow Krokanura with the evolve mechanic. Attack, mill three cards. And we found a good one here with a lookout as well. So next turn could go Trigger Duo plus lookout. Phyrexian Tower could allow them to play the Gitrock already, and that's what they do. 6-5, does it stay back or hit us for 6? It's not saddled at least, so just an attack for 6. Okay, so probably save the fetch lands for potential landfall synergies. Can play Command Tower. And then... Maybe this turn we just want to go Banner plus Lookout. Could have attacked first, I suppose, and see what else we exile. but we're setting up quite nicely for next turn. If we play Dock first, we can play Faceless Agent for free. And wow, we actually found some more free spells, which will also let us play Frogmite for free. So we're going off. All right, so we went undefeated in the event, 14 wins, and then there's a few more with the unoptimized build of the deck before I tuned it for the Yargle event. So yeah, this is definitely the real deal, and yeah, the event is free to play, you don't even need to own the cards to participate, so definitely give it a try while it's still around for the next couple days. And then I've also included the deck list of the original Brawl version of Grolnok in the description, so if you want to check out this deck after the event, there's a slightly different build as well. Of course, it's not going to be nearly as powerful when you don't get that two mana discount, but still a lot of fun when it gets going. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.